Yeah, sometimes I think we forget that if not, um, you know, in our heads, in our feeling, in our living, that we're children of God, we're children of God. What does that mean? It's interesting because there's a lot of conundrums in Scripture that I don't think can be explained with words. You know, I come up here, I try to talk about these things, point to the moon, as they say, point to the sun. But it's not the sun, it's not the moon. Our minds do the same thing. Whatever I am saying, you interpret through your filters, through your projection of the world of what's happening. And so it's really interesting to reflect on this truth, as they say, that we're children of God, we're children of God. And here in our reading today, we hear also that we should be afraid. Although I'll remind you in our other reading a little earlier, it says be afraid of God. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid, it often says. And it says fear the Lord, fear the Lord. Maybe it's or translation, maybe it means turn to God in all the way. Again, a conundrum. Even if we knew the Hebrew, would we feel like we knew it if we were a, a Hebrew person in ancient times? Would we feel like we really had a grasp of all the scriptures? Would even the teachers, the rabbis, feel that way? Always? No, in a way, life is often a huge conundrum. In fact, the things we think we know are just the words we put on things. We're human. I'm a human. I'm, I have this body. I have this body. This body. All these things are ideas that point to the reality, that point to it. Now, often when I hear this idea of we should not be afraid, I <laughs> can't help but scratch my head a little bit because often I feel like fear can come up Somewhat naturally, maybe there's a state, who knows? A lot of teachers talk about this where you're not afraid anymore, where there is no quarry and I have no edge and I'm everything. You know, you don't just hear this from Christ, you hear this from other people. But on the journey there, or if it is even a journey, the returning to that natural infinite peace in reality, I think fear still will come up will come up for each of us. Maybe even for them, they just still seem to bother them. Maybe that's the truth. I think often fear naturally arises for the mind and body, at least for the way we think of ourselves. In our state now, fear, how could it not? We have so much going on in the world. We have things going on in our own lives, in our family's lives, that are free and scary. Free and scary. And in my reading of our scripture reading today, in, in my Bible, um, NIV, it said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And so I have to settle on this idea that maybe being our fear is what is really casting us at letting go of. At least before we can rise above it all, we can let go of being our fear, being our judgment, being our need to control things and because of our fear, because of our sense of separation, yes. Because of our idea of what life is, our story, our many stories, that's often why we fear. We carry these stories of what could happen. We've seen things, we know things about life. We think we do. And yet being in that story all the time, returning to it, is being afraid, is being afraid. What's, what was I afraid of? Oh yeah, that. What was I so upset about? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes I can be in that mode like, oh, I feel too normal right now. What was that thing I was worried about? Okay, that's, okay, that feels better. That's more like it. I can feel that way with the little baby, the little Jessa. In the middle of the night, she makes a sound. It's weird. Like last night, I don't hear it that often, but like a, a weird sound. Like, I haven't heard that one before. It sounds kind of stifled. Maybe I should check on it, see what's going on. And I do. I, I, I just have to get up and go a little bit. But sometimes that fear can hit you 
naturally. So it's an emphasis. There's a reality to what we're afraid of. It makes sense. We're afraid to lose certain things. To have certain things. To experience certain things. Yet our sages tell us that accepting that fear is part of the journey, actually. Part, part of what allows us to overcome being our fear. Being our fear. Is accepting that fear comes. <laughs> Often when we fight it, we, we have this relationship with it. We're always we're wrestling with it. Wrestling, always wrestling with it. But when we let it wash over us in its fullness, when we let our sense of separation just have its moment, I don't like this person, I don't like that, this, anything, never happy about what's going on. Minds can often be like that. We can let it go. We can see it. When we just intentionally say, okay, this is what's arising, when we turn more into our peace, we don't really know it that way. We, we still notice all this stuff coming up, but when we intentionally just let it come, let it go, then we're not being our fear. We're letting the fear wash down. In a way, we are called to do this with our joy as well, with our love. Instead, if we try to hold on to these things, these so-called positive things, then we become kind of obsessive, addictive. Oh, what's that thing that brought me into the happiness? I need to go do that again. I need to do that every day. I need to do that all the time. And sometimes maybe that's healthy, but often it's addictive because the things we tend to turn to pull us out of our life sometimes. I know for some people, they pull us out of connectedness with others. It could be lust. It could be Anything. Could just be the joy of X, Y, Z. I think naturally we gravitate to the things that make us happy, but again, if we become possessive, we try to control, always, I have to be happy. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that, and I don't want to hear that. I don't want to see you, because I have to be happy. I have to have this specific idea all the time, this feeling. And the only time I have this feeling is when I watch Jeopardy. No, a repeat. You know, you never know what it is for someone. Maybe it ties back to our childhood. Jeopardy was on when we were kids. That's when our whole family got together. We heard, didn't argue or something, right? So there's there's health in these things. We gravitate to health in these things, but become too possessive, and again, we are these behaviors. We we. Put ourselves in a precarious position. And the Bible is always talking about this kind of stuff. Don't be afraid, be afraid of God. <laughs> Don't be afraid, be afraid of the one who can throw you in hell. This is actually in there. Body and soul in hell. What's this conundrum of both sides of the, the, the tongue, so to speak? In a way, I think. It's like a process. It's, it's teaching us, well, if you're going to be afraid, be afraid of the one you should be afraid of. I mean, it actually says something like that. Don't be afraid of everyone else. Be afraid of the one who can throw you in the fire. If you're going to be afraid, well, then be afraid of the one that is your life. Be afraid of the one that is all power. Be afraid of the one that you can't get away from. Be afraid of life, love, wholeness. So what, what kind of fear is that? Is she okay? In a way, I think it turns to all of the power of God. It's a way, it's perhaps Scripture's way of saying, okay, your fear pointed towards the divine. Because it's with you, it's with everyone, it has power over everything. And again, it's a conundrum. Conundrum. And in a way, settling on the fact that it's a conundrum, that it's, it's a mystery, life is beyond our dissecting of it. When we settle on the mystery of the moment, of what will happen, of what these feelings mean, 
We can find a greater peace. We can find the peace of the mystery of God, the wholeness of infinity. Often we try to grasp every concept, every idea, and yet it's presented both ways in our scripture. It's presented all these different ways. How could you grasp something that's like water? It's your life, actually, this is pointing you to. It's not pointing you to owning spirituality. It's not pointing us to owning the truth. Now, it often does help my mind to feel like I kind of get something. I can understand that. I do think there are ways to talk about spirituality that are more and more healthy and some that are more destructive. More and more destructive. Even. There are ways to use religion to wield a soul to the back. But I think the point is the more we reveal these deeper truths to our minds, the more our minds can find peace, that openness, that mystery in life. It's already here. It's already with us. You know, when I listen to different teachers, including Christ, I think it's interesting when they point to this not knowing, this silence. Silence. Because it seems a little off. I'm listening to you talk, and you're saying, silence your mind. <laughs> or let your silence just notice that you're already silent. That's your fundamental nature. Your mind goes, the world goes. But what are you? You are this openness, this silence. I find it kind of confusing, but maybe it's meant to be. Maybe this pointing to the greater mystery is means that we have to open ourselves to mystery, to find the mystery. To life. To life. There's so much that happens we couldn't plan on. Our minds like to plan so far ahead for a thousand different things. What if they say all these things? I'm going to focus on the worst ones. What if they've said that? What if they meant that? I don't like them if they meant that. I don't like them if they said that. We settle on this because it's defensive, right? If this is as bad as it can get, but I get my wall sign up, I'm good. I'm good to go. No one can hurt me. No one can hurt me. My walls are tall enough. It doesn't matter if they didn't say it. If I take it very seriously that they could have, then I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm protective enough. I can defend myself. But I don't think that's what Christ meant when he said, do not be afraid. I think in a way we have to let our walls down a bit. Say, okay, I feel all these ways about things. Okay, I do. Let's just accept it. I feel these ways, they come up. But maybe I shouldn't live in it. Maybe I'll just let it come. Let it come and notice there's a lot of mystery going on right here. A lot of stuff I don't know. I don't know what any of you are really thinking. I don't know how you're feeling about life, about life. I know some people are going through tough times. Now some people are going through great times. Now some people have a mix of both. It's a lot of And so let's take a moment. Turn to the mystery of life of the Lord. said that this life that we can only point to is love, is joy. We don't have to pull it out of the hat. We don't have to go and grab that thing. Some folks struggle with drug addiction because of the escape, because of the peace, because of psychological addiction, pathological addiction. What are we grasping for as our addictions, whether they're sanctioned by society or not? The peace, the peace that's always with us. When we get out of all those things we're worrying about. The peace when we let go of our need to return to our judgments. How upset we are. That 
Someone did something 20 years ago, perhaps. Yes, they come. They come. We have reminders of these things. But may we not be afraid. May we settle in the island. Thank you.